Welcome back now to the show and moving into that second topic on the Detroit Lions and how they're handling Jared Goff's extension. When could we expect something to get done? The Lions have been pretty active this free agency and just in this offseason in general, not really having to deal too much with trying to get that much better. A lot of their rosters coming back, a lot of their offense and defense is going to look very similar to what it did last year. But they had to iron out some things like the extension to some pretty important players to their roster, Amon Ross St. Brown, Penny Sewell, and of course, Jared Goff. They were able to extend Amon Ross St. Brown, giving him that massive four-year contract to make him one of the highest paid receivers in the NFL. They also handed out a extension to their right tackle, Penny Sewell, to make him the highest paid offensive lineman in the NFL. And now you get to Jared Goff, really the last piece of their, um, or the last item on their checklist to complete this offseason. Because in my opinion, I've th- I think they've done a great job of addressing everything that they have to, getting better or replacing the one or two players that they lost this offseason. They've done all of that. Now, now all they have to do is figure out the most important position on their team, the quarterback, Jared Goff, and addressing really that situation. They were able to touch on the defensive back room that they needed um, with the loss of Cam Sutton. They added Carlton Davis. They drafted Terry on Arnold and Rake Straw in the second round. So to me, they did a lot to address that. That was one of their biggest needs and holes on their team. I was a big fan of how they did that. Now you get to the quarterbacks and CBS CBS Sports' Jonathan Jones reported back in January how both parties, both Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions, are very interested in an extension in Jones's words. But you think about that in January now, it's four or five months later in the month of May, and nothing really has gotten done. But their general manager, Brad Holmes, has talked about the negotiations in a recent interview with WXYT 97.1 FM, in which he said, First and foremost, he's earned an extension. It's important. It's a high priority for us, and both sides are working really, really hard, and these things just take time. On that topic, on earning it, you know, that's the first thing he said. That's the first thing he wanted to emphasize in his entire statement and his entire interview that Jared Goff has certainly earned it because you think back to that trade and how Jared Goff got here, how this whole team managed to form over the last couple of years and turn into one of the top contenders in the NFC. You look at back at that trade, a lot of people would have said that Jared Goff, you know, being traded to the Lions, you know, that's it for him. The Lions aren't going anywhere anytime soon. This is just a lost cause. It doesn't matter. Jared Goff will be irrelevant in the next three to four years. But the complete opposite happens. He has helped the Lions uh, win their first NFC North division title for the first time in um, or since 1993. They made their first playoff game and appeared in their first playoff game since 1991. They tied the franchise record for 12 wins, and they set the record for the most 30-point games uh, with nine games of 30 points or more this past season. So Goff and the Lions as well, all the talent around them, have certainly helped change the narrative around the Detroit Lions. They're not looked as just one of the teams just in the NFC. You know, they're an easy game. They're not really to be taken seriously. Now that has really flipped on its head. And Jared Goff has helped them reach these goals, these landmarks of their organization, but also himself this past year had a career-high 67.3 completion percentage through for over 4,500 yards and 30 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. So at 29 years old, you're looking at Jared Goff, and this was a big moment to show the rest of the NFL and the Lions that he really does deserve an extension, that the Lions should want to keep him, and a lot of their success is entitled is entailed to Jared Goff they have to keep him around and that's something they're working towards but also like Brad Holmes says these sort of things take time and it was interesting more on how he elaborated it um, further in his interview when he said the whole process of budgeting and preparation and all of that that kind of goes into it we've been preparing for a while now and look in a perfect world in a perfect world we'd have we 
we'd have had all three of them done, bang, bang, bang. But these things just kind of take a while, especially with the quarterback market. But I have faith faith that it's going to that it's going to get done. That's what Brad Holmes said to really end that interview. And there's a few things that I found pretty uh, interesting from that whole statement that he said. You know, the process of budgeting and preparing for this extension, a lot of teams do it well, and a lot of teams do it very poorly. I won't name teams, name names, but how the Lions, <laughs> how the Lions have really dealt with this extension, and you look at the three players that they're trying to extend and that they feel confident in doing so, Pen, uh, Penny Shul, highest paid in the NFL. You look at Amon Ross St. Brown also, the one of the highest paid receivers in the NFL. And now Jared Goff, with another extension, probably is going to get north of $40 million, $45 million in an extension for potentially three, four more years. He's only 29 years old. So the way that they've done it, they've handled that very well. And I think it's a refreshing sight to see teams acknowledge it and sort of give themselves the pat on the back because not a lot of teams can do it well and are thrown into this conversation of do you get rid of this player or do you get rid of another one? Can you afford to keep all of them? How does that affect the rest of your team? All those things pop up to organizations that don't really plan it out very well. And the Detroit Lions, all credit to them for really planning this out appropriately to have a competitive team for consecutive seasons. Uh, that's the one thing. And also, he said he would have liked to have done all three, Amon Ross St. Brown, Penny Sewell, and Jared Goff, back to back to back. But he mentioned the quarterback market and how really crazy it is, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL on an average annual salary is Joe Burrow at $55 million. Then around him, I don't know the order, but I'm pretty sure it's Lamar, Justin Herbert, these sort of guys that are up there, um, rightly so, with how important they are with their te- uh, to their team and just how reliant on them and their skill set and their just talent their teams are to succeed in the NFL. Jared Goff might not be to the level to, of those guys and how impactful he is. You know, with Lamar, just as an example, the whole game plan, the whole system really runs off of him and his running, running ability, doing uh, options, read options, throwing short routes, getting him on the run as well, getting the running game going. That's all revolving around Lamar's skill set and just changing the game plan to fit him as best as they can. That's another organization that have that has done it well, planning this entire thing out, which is why they're so successful. The Lions, trying to get this extension done, it pops up the question of when they get it done or how they get or not how they get it done, but how much money uh, they give to Jared Goff because Brad Holmes is very knowledgeable of the quarterback market, knowing how up and down and just how much it could change from one night, from one day to the other. They're waiting on a few extensions. There's a few pending ones out there. If you think about Dak, Brock Purdy, Trevor Lawrence down the line, Jordan Love as well. Some of these quarterbacks, most specifically Dak, who is on the last year of his deal, do you wait for some of them to sort of test out the market to see how it all plays out? You kind of have an idea right now, but you don't know where it's going to trend and fall with the next line of quarterbacks trying to get paid. Do you try and jump all those guys and get it done as early as possible to try and overpaying Jared Goff if he sees that all these other guys are getting a lot more money? Afterwards, do you have to pay him more now because of that? I, I tend to side with paying him as early as possible just to get it out of the way. And also, it is cheaper. That's also better. And it creates a lot more salary cap if you get the extension done um, further down the line. So that's how I would approach it. The Lions feel pretty confident about it. I think they'll get it done with Jared Goff and how important he has been to their preparation, to their success. You look at that division. We actually touched on this a little bit uh, this morning when I appeared on the GSMC football podcast with Kenneth and uh, Emran, we talked about the NFC North a little bit and ranked it and just gave some reasonings why we rank the teams the way that we did. And in talking a bit about the Detroit Lions, I had them as the number one team in that division. And looking at them and just the rest of the, the NFC North, the Lions, talent-wise, I think they could stack up with anyone in there. But also quarterback-wise, where which is what we're talking about here, 
Jared Goff, very experienced, has been a starter in the, uh, a couple of teams now, the Lions and the Rams. You have that experience. You, you have him at 29 years old, a very seasoned veteran. He knows what he's doing. He knows everything, his routines, the playbook, everything that you would want in a starting quarterback. And then you look at the Vikings, you know, potential rookie quarterback, the Bears, rookie quarterback. The Green Bay Packers have Jordan Love, who has been in the NFL for a while now, but he just had his first full season of being a starter and the guy there for the Green Bay Packers. So quarterback-wise, if you're thinking about it, on raw, natural talent, Jared Goff might not be the guy you pick first, but in terms of being in the big games, having gone through that season, the trials and tribulations of it, having struggled in Los Angeles and now sort of reinventing himself here with the Detroit Lions. He's done it all. He's seen a lot of things, and that, I think, gives them an edge. You want to keep that guy around. He's a very beneficial person, quarterback, obviously, but just leader of that team to have around. He really makes this offense go, and I think him, with the job Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes have done, they're really in the beginning of a pretty extended run that they could have here with the youth of Amon Ross St. Brown. Their offensive line is great. Just nailing down Jared Goff, like I mentioned before, he's only 29 years old. If you can keep him around for the next three to four years, that's a great window now where the Lions have a great chance to compete with the 49ers, the Eagles, anybody else in the NFC to try and make a run at the Super Bowl. You could argue that they could have been in the Super Bowl last year if it wasn't for that inexperience, but now they have that under their belt. If they can get Jared Goff done this se- this uh, offseason, I think it'll put everything away and give them the best chance to get back to that NFC Championship game, but this time have it end in a different way that benefits them, gets them to their uh, to a Super Bowl appearance, and heck, maybe even win it at the end of the day, but that's a long time away. Not enough time to talk about the season and the next Super Bowl, so we're going to take a pause here in the action and move on. The second break of the show is coming up, and further down the line, More on the Philadelphia Eagles collapse late in the season last year. We're going to talk about that. I mentioned Drake Greenlaw and his injury, how he thinks he could have been beneficial in that second half of the Super Bowl. Stay tuned why. And also how a unorthodox method of choosing a draft pick came up recently with the Detroit Lions and the Las Vegas Raiders. Stay tuned to find out more on that topic. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. Look 